What's up, YouTube? It's your girl, Shin Quay, aka Quay, and I am here in Atlanta, Georgia. For those who don't know me, um, I am a lash tech here in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm probably, no, not probably, but I'm like one of the best lash techs that you can ever go to. So if you're here in the area, just come check me out. Um, For those that's new to my channel, in this video, we talk about lashing. We talk about behind the scenes. I give you guys tips, tricks, and show you guys new things. So if you ever learn something new but inspired motivated or probably about to get ready to quit your job make sure you like and subscribe and for those that are new welcome and join us on the journey so in this video we are going to talk about licensing we are talking about all about licensing and just things that deal with a license because as a lash tech depending on where you are you do need a license so we're going to just dive deep right now so the first tip about licensing is first of all i'm originally from michigan and when i was in michigan that's where i learned lashes at in michigan when i was living there five years ago you do not need an esthetician license and then when i moved down here to georgia i was still doing lashes i didn't have an esthetician license and then when i end up um i was working inside my home with no license and then when I moved inside of a suite, I found out that you had to have a license only because state board had came into my shop and they did their little job and investigated me and everything and found out that I didn't have a license. So long story short, I shut down my, I uh, closed my doors and I ended up going to esthetician school to get a license. Now, when you do go to esthetician school to get your license, esthetician school doesn't really teach you how to do the making money services. They teach you the basics and how to pass state board. So some of the things they may teach you is like um, how to do facials, how to do waxing, how to wax between the legs, but you're not doing a full Brazilian wax. You're just learning how to do the uh, penny liner part. They teach you how to brow tint. They teach you how to um, be professional in a professional setting. They teach you how to basically do facials, back facials and front facials. Like when I was in at such school, that part didn't really excite me. It's like you have two parts of being an esthetician. You have the aesthetic side, which is the facial, the waxing and all the cute stuff and then you have the other side which is more so like the eyelash extensions the microblading the lip injections like the the boo cool you're gonna make all this money this is more so elegant and it's more so a, of a step two of this one but the step two things they don't teach you but going back to school they basically is going to teach you about skin diseases and what to avoid what temperature your um your steamer should be on, how to deal with certain kinds of infections if they have them. We're not doctors or dermatologists. We're only estheticians. They teach you stuff like that. School takes about a thousand hours to do. A thousand hours is equivalent to six to eight months. So let me tell you guys, those who are like, oh, I don't know if I want to go to school, this and the third, well, just know six to eight months of your life is nothing. A thousand hours of your life is nothing. So either way I go, whether you decide to go to school or not, those thousand hours you still have to live. So why not go ahead and just go to institution school, get you a license, be legit, and be done with it. Take your test, you done with it. You don't got to take the test no more. The only way you will have to take the test again is if you decide to transfer your license to a different state. And then you have to take their state board test, but you don't have to go to school all over again. You can take the test as many times as you like. So if you fail it once, you can take it again and again and again. You just have to keep on paying for it. But they're never going to make you have to redo school again. Okay? So um, going back to about you have to learn lashing and brows and all that by yourself you find those trainings by searching somebody who you trust who do lashes for example i do lashes 
I also teach last year. I'm also good at what I do. So you may be probably been researching me, looking at my work, wondering, do she do trainings? But you'll reach out to me or you'll reach out to whoever your um you'll reach out to whoever you're interested in doing training with, ask them do they do trainings, take their training, and then boom, you have a certificate. A certificate. People have to understand, and I teach this in my classes, the difference between a certificate and a license. A certificate is basically saying, I did a class with this person. If you want to see this person work, look up her. This is how my work is going to be. And now I know how to do this service. I successfully completed a training by this person, sign and date. That's all. A certificate is not if state board coming to your office space and you say, oh, here's my license. They're gonna be looking at you like you crazy. And then if it's even, and if they really, really shady, they might even look into the person who you train with and then go see if they even have their own license to be training. Cause you train the people who don't even have a license. So a certificate is different. Now a license is something that you get from the state you renew it every year, you get a license number, you're in the system, and this lets you know that, boom, this person has a license. Now, your certificate of latch extensions of knowing how to do it goes underneath your license. But you don't have to do anything for that to, for that to, you know, say that. It's just you need a license to do lashes. Now, you need to go learn how to do lashes, and boom, now you, now you know how to do it. When it comes to other services, like, um, microblading lip injections um lip blush tattooing those also need different kinds of pieces of paper to legitly be able to do it so for like for example for micro shading and lip blush and tattoo you need more than just a certificate you don't you need more than just the esthetician license you also need your establishment of where you're working out of that needs to be like tattoo approval by the health department the health department has to come in here and make sure that everything that you, that you have in your suite is appropriate to do tattoo ink inside of your suite so you need that kind of license you you need a tattoo permit you need a tattoo establishment license and you need like insurance but a lot of people that's doing micro shedding don't have this information and the reason being is because I understand sometimes you have to get to, you got to do things that you don't want to do in order to get to where you want to be. And that's understandable. But just know when you don't have all your ducks in a row, if you were get in trouble, you have, you have to like cover your own butt. And whatever consequences that follow, you just have to be prepared. When it comes to doing lip injections or when it comes to doing the Hyaluron pen, because with lip injections, with the needle, you have to have a um, a registered nurse. You got to be a registered nurse. You even got to be a registered nurse to buy the lip filler product. But when it comes to doing the Hyaluron pen, which is the new needleless technique, you literally really don't need nothing. But what I recommend people to get is to have an esthetician license. Because if anything wants to happen, people is not coming after you. They are coming after your license. So you can, it's easy for you to be like, okay, I'll give you guys my license. If this is the consequence, here's my license. I give you my license. We done. But if they're coming for you, your little bit of yourself, then it's going to be a little bit more different. And don't give me my license. Just give me you. Give me your insurance. Give me this. Give me that. Or you're not legit. Well, let me give you the fines and the consequences, which may be a fine or it could lead up to imprisonment, all depending on uh, what the situation is. So you just want to make sure that you have all your proper paperwork that you need. But to really perform services, you need an esthetician license. Even to get you a business license, they're going to ask for some kind of like esthetician license. Like what are... Actually, no, they don't ask for esthetician license. They just ask you for what you do and they expect you to have whatever documents you need. For your business but i always tell people have a s have some kind of licenses now in some states it's not the same some states you don't need no license depending on what state you're in because i know who 
I don't remember what state it is, but I met a girl and she said to do micro blading, to do micro shading, to do lip tattooing. You don't need nothing. You could just do it. So it's different. You have to just go on your, um, on your, like your FDA, oh no, your health department and go on your licensing board. You have to see what it is that you need in order to legitly do whatever services that you're offering but i definitely know for sure that you need an esthetician license to do um lashes here in georgia now if you don't have a license for whatever reason you can't really afford school you can't go to school right now i understand i get it but just make sure that you are just doing a great job at your work a lot of times i was doing lashes out of my apartment and out of different suites for probably like four years no 2019 i got my license so probably about three years i had no license i'm just out here doing my thing but then i wanted to be taken more seriously i wanted to raise my prices i wanted to just you know be more legit so that's when i decided to get my esthetician license i also feel like when you have some kind of like license you got a different kind of level of respect to yourself so it's like oh you got a problem with the service oh i messed you up oh well you um i don't got a boss but you can contact my licensing department you don't want people to go that route but if it ever came down to it then you know that's your best move so don't be in a panic don't be in a frenzy if you have a license don't just shut your business down just be with caution just understand um the consequences just be not yeah, understand the consequences and under and just be aware this video is not to scare anybody to not want to do this service anymore it's just to make you more aware and i hope i could encourage you to go out and spend those a thousand dollars i mean a thousand hours of your life and go get your license the cost of school is pretty expensive. When I went to school, maybe I only paid $2,500. And the reason being is because the school that I was going to wasn't accredited. But typically, schools can range from probably, I don't know, like regular tuition, $15,000, $20,000, whatever. But if I was you guys, I would... You could also do like an apprenticeship program. An apprenticeship program is nothing but somebody having their cosmetology, master cosmetology license. And you can work up under them and they will teach you how to do everything to pass their board. And then, boom, you go take your test and you're now legit. Um, but just, take, just go to school. Don't worry about the money. Don't worry about, you know don't worry if this is something that you want to do and you want to take yourself seriously to just do it everything else is going to figure itself out just go with what you want to do and just watch how stuff just start following line just because you're going after what you want and be genuine about it be passionate about it don't just go spending all these thousands of dollars spending wasting your time all because you think you know you're gonna make you don't get famous and just make all this buku money. I honestly, this is from past experiences. I honestly would suggest you probably do. Don't go just straight off to school. I probably would suggest you to honestly just get your hands in the field a little bit. And without no license, get your hands in the field and see if this is something that you actually want to do. Like you do take a lash class before going to school. Take you a lash class. Get to doing your lashes and get to doing whatever service that you're doing. And then if you feel like this is something that you want to do, you can see yourself doing this for 10 plus years, go get your license. Be legit. Spend a thousand hours to do something that you're going to find yourself doing in 10 plus years. Um, what else I got on my little board? I want to let y'all know. Yeah. And that's pretty much sums this video up so if you don't know anything else just know it's better to have that paperwork 
then not to have that paperwork. And also, just from my pet, my personal experience, once I got my license, I felt like, oh, prices went from $100 to $150, just like that. <laughs> I need to make my money back. I just spent that school. It's all, it's on my board next to my business. Um, What's that, what's that called? Business. Um, business little piece of paper. So you walk inside, first thing you see, boop, my license. Second thing you see, oop, my business license. So it's like, you walking into a real business, baby. What's up? How can I serve you? So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any other questions regarding licensing or you feel I need to do a part two to better explain some things, let me know. If you are interested in getting a little hint on what the um, state board theory test covers and how to prep for it and, you know, little tips on how you could pass it. Because on my state board theory, I think I passed like what a... 93 and my teacher was in that class as well and my grade was higher than the teachers and she's like well how, how did i get this 85 and you get 93 and i'm your teacher and i'm just like baby we'll prepare and if, if you also want help on the examination part i had to take my exam twice because I failed the first time, but the second time I passed. So if you want information on what's on the exam and how to pass the exam too, make sure you give this a thumbs up and I make sure that I give y'all the flavor. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Remember, I do videos like this often. So if you have any questions, leave them below. I will get to them or I will do a video on them because sometimes I get the same questions over and over. But I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you enjoyed enjoyed this one. Bye.